Hello once again. Welcome to Officers Corner on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network, NCBN. I am your host, Deputy Superintendent of Customs, Abdullahi Mewada. There is a popular saying that all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. This is a time-tested reality which seeks to promote the mind as well as the body by encouraging mental and physical fitness as a cornerstone of all-round well-being and productivity. The same is true for officers and men of the Nigeria Customs Service. In this regard, the service has a viable unit under the TRADOC Training and Doctrine Command, Guagualada. The unit is responsible for managing sporting activities within the service. In line with the CGC's mandate to ensure that officers and men in the service are mentally and physically fit to discharge their statutory functions of revenue generation, suppression of smuggling, and trade facilitation. He set aside a day dedicated for extracurricular activities. Nigeria Customs Service over the years has built and sustained formidable teams that won accolades for the service in different national and international competitions. Our discussion today centers around sporting and fitness in NCS. And joining us today on the program is uh, Sports Secretary in Nigeria Custom Service, ASC1 Samuel Onikeku. Welcome to Officers Corner. Thank you for having me. And uh, my second guest is uh, Deputy Superintendent of Custom, Roosevelt Raymond, Sports Psychologist, Nigeria Custom Service. You are welcome to Officers Corner. Thank you to have us. Let's start the conversation. Um, how long have you involved in sports, both within the service and outside NCS? As a person? Well, as a person, I would say in uh, customs in 27 years because I was recruited through sports in 1994, August 20th to be precise. But before that, some few years I've been involved in sports representing Kaduna State and then the country before we were recruited in 1994 mm. to customs. So, give and take, I've been involved in sports for over 30 years in the country, but in customs for 27 years now. But can you tell us your journey before customs in sports? Well, my journey before how, how you you developed that passion about sport? Well, my uh, father used to be a military man, and he was serving in uh, one div in Kaduna, and you know physical activities do take place in Kaduna. So there was a time that young boys went to this uh, a field, and I saw people competing, running. I said I can run better than them, and Kaduna State coach at that time said, "Come and join," and I defeated all of them. That's how I was invited to come and join the team while at that time I was still in secondary school. After secondary school, I was employed in Kaduna State and we went to numerous competitions where I was able to represent Kaduna State, win laurels for Kaduna State, from there, uh, uh, go to national camp, represent Nigeria in uh, African championships in Cote d'Ivoire, which I won laurel, and from there I was recruited to Nigeria Customs Service. So before I joined the customs, I've been representing Kaduna State and the country and winning laurels for the country. That's why I was recruited to the Niger to Nigeria Customs Service to come to continue to be able to uplift the name of the service through sporting activities. But um, basically, do you think um, your, your, your strength is more in athlete or there are other sporting activities that you still excel in? Well, as a person, yes, I excel mostly in athletics, but I played some other events too, a little of basketball or volleyball. Mm. But when you, it comes to specialization, mm. I specialize yeah, in athletics, athletics, track and field, 100 meters and relays to be specific. Excellent. Uh, Dr. Raymond, yeah. let's start with um, how did you find yourself in sports before customs? Well, that's an interesting question. Primarily, it's like a street boy playing football at the street. Mm. And before you know it, secondary school took over 
I was games and sports prefect, mm -hmm. of which I excel in our local government, mm -hmm. then Bitoli Kedru local government. Then which from state? there, that is Imo state. Imo state okay. Then from there, it continued to university. I might trust you to know that there's what is called university game, all university games, of which in 1993, 92, 93, I was 100 meters gold medalist, the whole country. That is uh, athlete? Yes, that is an athlete. Then I had an issue then, injury took me back to football. And in football, I also excel. But in, I just like as the Secretary General Abjara just rightly said, in 1994, there, is a, there was a need by then uh, custom administrator, General Ango. He now requested able athletic men and women to be recruited. They have to go all states of the Federation. And to the glory of God, we really excel 4455 five from East State. And I was opportune to be selected, recruited in Nigeria Customs as very emo state. And since then, the passion I have for sporting activity grew. Now, notwithstanding, I read physical and health education mm. as my first course, mm. then government and administration as my second course. So for you to be able to read physical and health education, you ought to major in various sporting activities. Mm. But I can say my area of specialization, football, and partially athletics and other field events. Can we say you are you are you are a accomplished ad sport administrator? By this special grace of God. So now I had a word, uh, coach. Uh, let's say sport psychologist. Yeah. And our, our audience would like to know who is a sport psychologist. What do you do? Actually? Oh my God! Mm. A sports psychologist is the person, a sporting individual, red athletic brilliant enough mm. to recycle the athletes mm. on their body movement and in their sporting major activity. You see, when there is an event, mm. to be precisely, you see some people will come with some phobia. Mm. Some people will feel intimidated. Some people will feel myopic. Some people will feel that they cannot measure up. It is the job of a sports psychologist to psych them to motivate them, to inspire them, to tell them the ingredients, the little gitters of the of that event, mm. and how they can, you know, push up, meet up, and accomplish that event and come out with a good lorry. In fact, the major, the major, you, you you cannot achieve anything without a sports uh, sports psychologist. It's like your manager. It's like your coach. It's, it's more than your coach. Well, uh, that is so awesome. I have learned a lot from such submission. Now, uh, down memory lane, history. In customs, do we have people who have excelled in some certain sport activity? Let's say it can be wrestling, it can be whatever, who have made name for Nigeria Customs Service. Let's say years back, do we have such kind of people? Yes, we have a lot, a lot. And let me start with uh, retired former heavyweight champion Joe Lassisi was a former custom officer and a world champion and he uplifted the name of the service with numerous achievements and then I go to that is in uh, boxing mm. then I go to uh, basketball we have lots of them we have Scott Naji he played basketball for Nigeria and then he coached Nigeria's team to several international competitions. He was also a custom officer. He's still a custom, custom officer. Still a now. custom officer. He's still a custom officer now. We have uh, uh, Abdurrahman Mohammed. He coaches the female basketball team of the service. He has been a coach to the senior national team, especially when the home base mm. want to go to international competition. Mm. Then let me come to athletics. We have Chinedu Odozo. She has won several international competitions, gone to two Olympics for uh, Nigeria. She has won gold in all African games with Marion Yali. She has captained Team Nigeria before. Uh, I will say my humble self again. Mm. I've gone to several international competitions to represent Nigeria, win Lawrence. And funny enough, 1997, 
uh, retired General Ango uh, promoted some of us. I was privileged to be among those that were promoted and uh, were given commendation letters for uplifting the name of the service. And finally, let me include Isa Saliu. He was recruited in 2009, and when he was brought to us in the sports unit, we were able to take him. I was his personal coach, and we coached him, and he started from being nobody to start winning nationally and then to international competitions. He went to Canada mm -hmm. in 2010, and he was the one that ran the last leg in the relays and overtake took three other countries for Nigeria to get silver. That is the, was the only medal that Nigeria got there. And then in 2011, he was given an award uh, by the uh, for, uh, late former CGC. He was given an award. Uh, then Chine Dutu was given an award. I, I too was privileged to be given a, a special award too by the service for being their coach uh, in uh, 2011, in 2012. We're giving those awards. So you see that in some sporting uh, federation activities that we've been involved with, we have people that have represented the service Taqu and then Nigeria. represented the country and, and won uh, uh, laurels. And again, lest I forget, mm -hmm. we have uh, Margaret Binga. She's presently the uh, uh, president of Taekwondo Federation of Nigeria. She's an established Taekwondoist. She has won a uh, gold medal for Nigeria in all African games, and she was nine-time African champion in Taekwondo. Nobody could defeat her. Presently, she's the uh, president of uh, Taekwondo Federation of Nigeria. And let's finally let me say that even uh, about two weeks ago, I was privileged to be elected uh, in an election that we had to be the board to be a board member in Athletics Federation of Nigeria that, uh, that we run for the next four years. So you see that the service have had sportsmen and women that are representing the service way and uplifting the name of the service internationally that have done Nigeria proud, that have brought recognition to the service. So the sport unit of the service is a very accomplished unit that can measure to any other unit. But we want to say that continuously, not only these people, you still see other people that we come up, that we lift the name of the service and the country up as well. Do we have... Do you have others that you need to mention? No, Secretary General I've just mentioned. He has exhausted all of them. All of them. And and Many. why why those names are not known to us, even we in the uniform? No. I think this forum will be an avenue to they say this are is what we well are well known. Just like as you told you about the taekwondo, mm. the basketball, mm. Naji, and various many of them. Mm. You know, when you talk about recognition, there's a lot of things that make somebody to be recognized. Mm. In the sense, I won't say the service have disenfranchised them. Mm. But by the time you put them in ring light, mm. you as a, as, a, as a Nigeria custom journalist, mm. public relations, public relations journalist. unit, you are more than a journalist, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> with this information, they say lack of information deforms. The service, the CGC and its management has a duty to do, mm. to honor them, to promote them. And the international community will now say, ah, if you people, if this department have recognized them mm. and honored them, it's, who are we? Sky is just beyond their limit. I think this is uh, indirectly the work of the CGC because we are having NCBN because of the CGC and the PR unit is attached to the CGC's office, ACG headquarters. So it's we are trying to promote sports uh, in the PR unit, and uh, this is just the beginning. Sky. Yeah, yeah I said so, it. So, all. so so let's mm. move to sports in customs. Uh, what do you think are the? Let's start with briefly describe your activities in the sporting unit. Sport unit. Okay, in the sports unit of Nigeria Customs Service, we have lots of activities, but I will mention a few. Apart from going to national and international competitions. We are in charge of the weekly uh, uh, fitness exercises that we know we mm. do every mm. Thursday. Mm. Where once a week, officers and men of the service we come together on Thursday at 4 p.m. to try to exercise to keep fitness level. You know, every member of uh, every officer of Nigeria Customs Service is supposed to be fit because we are a paramilitary organization. So we have that that we do every Thursday, and then when athletes, uh, when officers are uh, recruited. We normally are attached to the training colleges mm. to take their I'm activities to that. Yes, because I've been in Kano, other he has been in Lagos. Mm. We've gone there, and through that, we've been able to even discover some uh, 
uh, players Talent. For, that we could join to the uh, sporting uh, activities of the service. So we do that again, and then we go to represent the service in the paramilitary circle or security agencies uh, uh, circle. Because normally we normally used to have security agencies games, we have paramilitary games, and we normally used to have the awesome games that is for military and paramilitary. So we go to represent the service there, and we have good relationship with the sports units of other security agencies. So these are briefly part of the activities that we do in the service to make sure that and run programs uh, for fitness and even advice. When we see people that are a little bit overweight, we advise them on food, on nutrition, on light activities that they can do to bring their weight down and to improve their mm -hmm. fitness level. So all this we do. So that these are part of uh, the activities that we perform in the in Nigeria Customs Service, apart from going to national and international competitions. Well, I think before you respond, we need to go for a short break, and when we return, we'll continue. If you are just joining us, this is Officers Corner on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network, NCBN. It's time for a short break. Do stay with us. Hello, join me on Officers Corner on the Nigeria Custom Broadcasting Network, NCBN TV, and NCBN Radio 106.7 FM. Officers Corner is a program that tells stories about custom officers and sister security agencies in a way that educates and entertains in a relatable manner. It also seeks to change the misconception about men and women in uniform in a relaxed atmosphere. I am Deputy Superintendent of Customs, Abdullahi Mayweather. Keep watching Officer's Corner on NCBN. Welcome back. Now, uh, Mr. Raymond, uh, he discussed some. Can you further expatiate about workforce and speciality within the unit, sport unit? Yeah, to throw more light to what Secretary mm. Coach Sam has said, he mentioned about ISA, the 400 meter dash athlete, hot international athletes. This is an officer that was just recruited as a normal general duty officer. Mm. He was brought to me personally. I saw the talent in him, which he did not see himself as a psychologist. Mm. And I push it to the international athletes that have been there before mm. and that has the skill of turning a raw good into a refined good. Mm. Today, we can cross and beat our chest. The Nigeria Customs Service, among all the paramilitary and security agencies, have done a great deal of good to this nation. T today, the officer is still waxing strong. Now, to further it to tell you this, Nigeria Customs Service, sports as a unit, is like a global unit. A global in the sense that we we'll have other sports officers that have gone internationally, like Chinedu, internationally to make the nation and custom proud in her field of athletic activity. Now, we are not just there just for training or just for as a male uh, officers. In very many occasions, when you see some officers that have a cell, even in shooting range, a muscular activity, in combating smugglers, believe you me, trace their, trace their origin. They must have partake in sports. Still, I have, to, I have to bring you back to my question. Yeah. The, within the sport units, you know, what are the activities? What I mean by activities in terms of, uh, let's say, the, 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 the administratively, you have so many things you some demarcations and some responsibilities how do you operate as a unit oh as a unit you know when we have a letter of invitation you know to participate at other paramilitary games mm -hmm. or security agency games or koja games or as, um, championship games mm -hmm. the letter will come 
they will write to the CGC. The CGC will forward it to uh, Tradoc. Then Tradoc will forward it to us. We will scrutinize it, see whether we are uh, ready for it or whether the service will able to. We will now rewrite to the uh, to the CGC. There our DCG, you know the bureaucratic bottleneck. Mm. If he approve, mm. then we already will have to push the athletes to camp. As I speak to you, uh, there is what is called a volleyball league. The athletes that are ready in camp, there will prepare them administratively, psychologically, physical fitness, and other rubrics. So that's how we operate. We don't just mm. go for any uh, athletic uh, event or championship without the knowledge of uh, Nigerian custom management. But uh, Mr. Samuel, in terms of coaching and uh, mentorship and so on and so forth, there is need. Uh, how how do you uh, let's say uh, you know you know one person cannot be in charge of uh, specialty in athletes, volleyball, basketball, and so on. So do you have assembled coaches in all areas of sports that uh, who manage like volleyball? Like um, I know someone when I was in Iduruko, we they used to invite Femi. They used to invite him with letters that you should come forward for sport. He's a general duty officer. So do you have some who specializes all those fields endeavors in sport? Yes, we have trained coaches in Nigeria Custom Service for every sporting federation competitions mm. that we attend. Mm. Now we have our 35 federations in Nigeria, mm. but we don't go to every of those competitions. We go to competitions or federations that we have strength, that we know that we can perform well. There is no need of us going to competitions where we know that we will not do well. Where are those your areas of strength? So, so those areas of strength, we have number one, athletics. Mm. We have trained athletics coaches in Nigeria, in Nigeria Customs Service. Number one, I'm a trained athletics coach. I'm the head coach in athletics. Mm. And I have a license to coach anywhere in the world. The word athletics sent uh, lecturers from Kenya to Nigeria to come and do a course and I was part of those uh, that did the course. I was even the governor of the class and I qualified to the Executive next... Executive governor. Go, uh, the governor of the class. I qualified <laughs> the to class. the next stage. And then the children we are talking about, we did the course together, she qualified too. So anywhere in the world, I have a license given by World Athletics with a license number that I can coach anywhere in the world. Let's come to basketball. Basketball, we have coaches like uh, uh, Scott Naji, AC Scott Naji. We have Abdurama Mohammed, and we have Mohammed Mohammed Jagu, we, that we normally call Jagu. And then we have uh, uh, Mata Adama. Just She's like a female, Femi, you have just female coach mm. in basketball. Mm. So all of them are trained at the National Institute for Sports. And then some, coach, some uh, uh, training that they've undergone again. Then let me come to volleyball. For volleyball, we have uh, uh, Akoni FF. Yes, even Akoni, though Akoni mm. Femi is a GD officer, mm. but he's, he started as he is a sportman. He has been playing volleyball for Jigawa, for Kanu for years before he was recruited to Nigeria Customs Service. Mm. So we made sure that he went for training mm. and with some little bit of mentorship, we made him to be the head coach for the male team. And then we have uh, Yunana S. Sunday, uh, uh, Sunday Yunana. He's an established uh, volleyball coach. He has played volleyball in Libya. He has played volleyball in Egypt. And he has coached in Libya before we recruited him to the Nigeria Customs Service. He's one of the coaches that we have. We have Priscilla Agara. She has been the captain to the uh, volleyball's female national team for more than 10 years. And then she's an international coach. She has taken Nigerian team to all African games for beach uh, volleyball. Then we have Adamu Jonah. Uh, Abu Jonah has played international uh, volleyball in Libya, in Bahrain, in Qatar, in Tunisia, so many places before we recruited him. And he too is among the coaching crew. All of them that you see have gone to coaching course. We don't carry people and give them responsibility that because you've done this before as an ex-international or a common coach. No. You must go through the rudiment of classroom. I've gone to NIS twice. Uh, uh, all our coaches have gone to NIS, which is the National Institute for Sport, which is the first stage for you to be accredited as a coach in Nigeria, and you must pass. And after that, then we go to that same federation. They will have a, a certification, which they send their world bodies to come. All our coaches have gone through there. So every coach you see in Nigeria Customs Service, in our strong areas, they can coach anywhere in the world.
Excellent. So now, now to further to what he's saying, yeah. maybe you are rushing me and you have forgotten. Mm -hmm. It may interest you to know that today, mm -hmm. Nigerian custom service, sports as a unit, have produced best maxman in shooting. And who are those people? Samuel Onikeku mm -hmm. and Dr. Roosevelt Raymond. We are satisfied coaching coaches. We are satisfied trainers in shooting long and short gun. Excellent. So maybe this is a, so now just let's let's shift a little bit to issue of fitness, sporting and fitness activities for for people like us who are not uh, you know you are not, we are not a professional. We just do sports for the sake of exercise and so on. Uh, how is sporting and fitness activities in NCS? And what is your unit doing to make sure that officers queue into this um, uh, mantra? You know, in physics, they will tell you there is a point which will go beyond. Mm. We cannot, on our own, we are limited. We have Thursday, Thursday exercise, mm. aerobic, aerobic exercise, mm. indoor exercise, some free will, what I mean, free will exercise. Maybe you might not be a professional uh, in badminton or in volleyball. You can do a little ship, a little body movement to entertain yourself and your soul. So, why am I saying that we are limited to some extent? When you are involved in aerobic exercise, there is sometimes you have a water break you know, donut break or whatever, light refreshment, mm -hmm. all those things, unless the management, unless the CGC and it management fit it in or enforce through the enforcement department, enforce it, we will be crippled to go a little further. Okay. Yeah. So uh, can you shed more light on this? Yes, I can. Uh, yes. Let me shed more light on what... Uh, Dr. Raymond has just said. You know, uh, we try to see how we encourage officers and men of the service to stay fit. Like uh, last year, the CGC graciously approved that sporting equipment should be shared to all our barracks. And I personally made sure that sporting equipment are shared to the barracks in Karo, mm. to the barracks at Tutaku, at a life camp. I personally took most of this sporting uh, equipment to them. We have table tennis uh, board, and if you go to most of the barracks, you see that there are badminton courts yes, there. I can attest so to that. So most officers, after closing, engage in mm -hmm. badminton. Even in Karo barracks, sometimes we play till 10 p.m. in the night. Lots of the times, and it uh, it has even encouraged uh, the women, our wives, to come out. Most of them and too children. are playing, mm -hmm. and even uh, during vacation, especially. When uh, this long COVID uh, uh, scene was going on, they play. And badminton is not a contact sport. You are in your side, I'm in my side. Mm. You play, I play. So we encourage the children too. So if you go to every barrack in Nigeria Customs mm. Service in the evening, you will see that one sporting activity or the other is going on. And as people started, you see lots of people are coming in. Before, we had only one badminton court in Karo Barracks, which is the biggest barrack of Nigeria Customs Service in Abuja more here. More than three. Yes. So, three. But now we have more than three. So lots of people can play at the same time. Lots of people can play at the same time. And then uh, uh, in the evening, some go for jogging. Behind us there, some people still go out to play badminton. So lots and lots of officers are, are engaging in sporting activities after uh, uh, close of work. And then on Saturdays again, you will have to come out early on Saturdays in the barracks in Cairo for you to have a chance to play badminton because there are lots of people that have mm. come out. So that is one of the ways that we've been encouraging uh, sporting activities. Sometimes we organize local competitions, table tennis, uh, block E and block F. Mm. So it brought, brings out encouragement, synergy among the officers. And that people will say, we are going to win. People go to practice. People do not want their block to lose. Mm. So this has brought up a lot of encouragement to officers and men of the service to do an extracurricular activities at home, at home after school work and uh, to buttress your point is um my game i usually i used to play basketball but uh, for, unfortunately due to you know the rigor of basketball i cannot withstand now still i'm young 
But uh, I saw some guys playing badminton, and one of those small boys that came to Idiru Kodon then was he came from Karu. So you understand, his father was uh, was deployed to redeployed to Idiru Kodon, and we started playing badminton. And uh, I started playing badminton during COVID nineteen, and I can tell you now, if you check my car, you see two rackets, That's and you good. see shuttles in my car. So I, I and I, I developed that enthusiasm, that passion during that COVID nineteen in Idiru Kodon. That extreme end. Yes. So, so how do you spread this over to area commands also? Is in most of the area commands because the sporting equipment that was shared at that time was not given to Ole com, uh, barracks in Abuja. Mm. It was sent to all of the zones. I can mm. attest to that. All the zones we sent to tennis to, we sent basketball to, we sent rackets to, we sent all equipment to all the zones, and we have people that are in charge of uh, sporting activities there that are making sure that these things takes place but you know that like the concentration is always in abuja abuja is the headquarters <laughs> but in all the areas there we have mm. some little sporting activities going on there yes if you are just joining in it's officers corner on the nigeria customs broadcasting network ncbn it's time for a segment our hero do stay with us don't go nowhere welcome to our heroes on officers corner in our segment today we take a look at two officers of the Nigeria Customs Service Sports Unit who have achieved much during their time. They represented the service and the nation at various sports competitions across the globe. Isa Saliu is not unfamiliar with the rigorous training and fitness regimen that comes with being an athlete, and he has the focus as well as medals to prove it. Some of them are as follows. A silver medal at the World Junior Championships in Toronto, Canada, 2010. A bronze medal at the Africa Senior Championship in Nairobi, Kenya. Another bronze medal at the African Championships, Asaba, 2018. He was also a finalist in the 4x400 Relay Commonwealth Games, 2010, in Scotland. And another bronze medal in the African Championships, Tunisia, 2010. Determination is a scary driving force, and Chinedu Odozo has shown her mantle and strength through the various accolades she acquired during her days as an active athlete of the Nigeria Customs Service. Three gold medals in Buaki, Ivory Coast, 1995, a silver medal at the 1998 African Championships, Dakar, Senegal, a gold medal at the All-African Games in 2003, a bronze medal in the 2003 All-African Games for a long jump, a bronze medal at the 2002 World Cup in Madrid, Spain, while representing Africa, and a gold medal at the 2003 Africa vs. Asia in Hyderabad, India, amongst many others. They showed their passion for sports, and their determination as well as their sacrifice for the badge, they will forever be in the history books of the Nigeria Customs Service. That's it for this segment of our Heroes on Officers Corner. The program returns in a moment. Do stay with us. <music> I was talking to some coach about um, the issue of sporting activities within the service. Now, um, before I move to Mr. Raymond, I would like you to dwell on the functional teams we have in custom service, both male and female, and the teams, the sporting the activities functional we, uh, teams we have in. Team. Okay, we attend some uh, competitions. Mm. Let me start with athletics. Mm. Athletics has been one of the sporting association. For, uh, competition that we attend that this service has excel a lot. Mm. Right now, we have about three officers that are, will be part of the people that will go to this Tokyo Olympics. I just came back from Lagos at the trials mm. and we did credibly well. And you know that to go to the Olympics, the standard is very high. Mm. You must make a mark to be able to do that. So we perform well in athletics. Athletics has been a sporting event that has given us a lot of laurels and has lifted uh, Nigeria Customs Service up. Then I go to volleyball. For the past four years, volleyball has been 
a sporting uh, competition, federation competition that we go that we excel in. Like the male volleyball team has been Nigerian champion in 2018, 2019, and 2020. We've defeated everybody for these three years. Mm -hmm. So we uh, we won in 2018. Uh, 2019, we became back-to-back uh, -back champions. And then in 2019, we be, uh, 2020, we became triple champions. So we've won it three years. In 2018, the female two won uh, the championship. In 2019, we had issues. You know, our women, some get pregnant or got uh, injured. Mm -hmm. But we came second. And 2020, we came second. But now we've come back. We've regrouped and we are okay. And we went to the African Club Championship in Tunisia in April. Mm -hmm. And our female team got to the semifinals. We defeated past champions. And we became among the top four teams in before, Africa. Before we discuss the issue of the successes, yes. what I want, just the teams. The teams. We have volleyball teams. Yeah, we have volleyball. Mm -hmm. Then we have basketball, male volleyball, and female. Male and female volleyball. Ve male and female volleyball. Active. Basketball, male and female. Athletics. Then we have table tennis, switch for male. Then we have uh, 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 table tennis, male, mm. alone. I've mentioned uh, athletics too. And then we have swimming. Swimming. Swimming, swimming also. Yeah. Yes, but now we've joined shooting. Because we went for the course and we've excelled. So mm. shooting now is not part of the sporting events that we go to. And then we have Taekwondo mm. again. Because we have the president here and we've been doing well too mm. in this particular event. So anytime any of these events are taking place in the country, you will find Nigeria Custom Service being represented there. And the beach. There's beach. What can you can you further uh reach Yeah, it? just like uh, you must have forgotten we have beach. Mm. We have beach mm. volleyball. Yeah. It's of which of we have volleyball. gone international. Mm. We we'll have, uh, uh, in fact, all fields. In terms of that, that, that beach volleyball, is yeah. it um, the same thing? Some people who are playing the normal volleyball can also play beach, or they are different? No, you must have a basic knowledge or basic experience. In beach, it's mm. only two or three. Mm. Why others is not the same? Mm. The beach is like you put some weighty sands, and it's very, it's very interesting. Mm. Yeah. So now, uh, basically, the, we don't play football, basketball, volleyball. No, 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 no. Let me come to it. Mm -hmm. I can tell you of the truth and of reality that if there is any league championship within the country mm -hmm. that have excelled, it should be Nigerian custom football team. Ever before we even joined the service. Mm -hmm. Now you know in football. It requires a lot of fund. Mm. As I speak to you, there is what is called Maritime Championship, of which Nigerian Custom Service have won it four times. Maritime Championship. Navy is there, and imports MPA. of MPA and all whatnot. Mm. Nagav. Nagav and Uncle. all. <laughs> we are Nigerian Custom Service are the only service. The only organization, the only department that have carried it four consecutive times. Uh, unfortunately, in 2018 or 19, we did not participate. Otherwise, who could have even been the current champion of Maritime Championship? So now, taking you back to the issue of competitions now. Yes, we've been attending lots and lots of international competitions. And since uh, our present CGT came in, uh, Kone Amid Ali retired, he has really done a lot for us. We started by with basketball, when we went to Togo to represent Nigeria, because we played second in the league finals, and we went to Togo to represent Nigeria, and we uh, qualified to go and represent West Africa mm -hmm. in Egypt, but unfortunately we did not go because the letter came late, so the preparations did not go well. Then 2018, we went to uh, Egypt for the African Club Championships with the female team and we placed eight and we came back. 2019 we went with the same uh, female team again, we came six. Uh, uh, 2020 because of COVID there was no international competition. Then this year 2021 the CGC graciously approved that the male and the female team should go to African Club Championship in Tunisia. So we went with the male and female team and the female team performed credibly well. We defeated Kenyan prisons to qualify for the semi-final. Kenyan prisons have been six-time champions in a, a club volleyball championship 
in Africa. We defeated them and we were congratulated by the Confederation of African Volleyball. And then so many of our players were highlighted at uh, uh, other clubs like Esperance, Fasins, and even that St. Kenya prisons are, are now are trying to poach our players. And we told them, no, they are officers representing Nigeria Customs Service, so mm. they cannot leave you and come and play professional there. Mm. So we did very, very well. The CGC has graciously encouraged us, and we are repaying back that encouragement that is given us by performing well. Because this is the first time that any female team in Nigeria for the past 20 years we get to that level in an international competition. We went to represent uh, the service and we went to represent Nigeria because we are the only Nigeria team that went. And we did very well, which made uh, us to know that with more preparations, next year we can get to the finals and conquer Africa. And I believe that by next year it will happen. By the grace of God, we, we are hopeful. So now, can you say in the last five years or so, or six years, if can you count the number of trophies? <laughs> <laughs> you know, to count the number of trophies we have won in various sporting activities and events is like counting sand or counting a bag of rice. Mm. But I have to say this and put this record straight. There's an adage that will say, this person planted, another person watered then God Almighty will put an increase. Then let me put it this way. General Ango, the then custom administrator planted, the let Diko watered. I'm here to tell you that our, our able, competent, credible General Ali, the CGC, had an increase. Since his session of his administration kicked off 2015. It has been lore, 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 lore galore. Kudos to him. But it's like a saying that also said, Oliver Tews, we need some more. Needing some more, we need more courage. We need more encouragement to other events like athletics, like shooting, like swimming. And that will be a very big bravo to him. So now, this conversation is getting sweeter, sweeter, sweeter. And uh, unfortunately, time is not so good, so friendly with us. But um, this is just the first segment of the conversation. And we are hoping next week to have another conversation to, so that we have a very complete package on what sporting units are doing in the service. So next week, we shall continue with the Officer's Corner. That's the much we can take on this episode of uh, Officer's Corner. I am Deputy Superintendent of Customs, Abdullahi Maywada. Do join us next week for another interesting edition. Thank you for watching and bye for now.